In this video, we're going to be talking about the evolutionary path of stars. In other words, what actually happens to stars as they leave the main sequence and what are the eventual life, uh, so what are the eventualities for a star. So uh, we're going to talk about the red giant and what happens after that stage. We're going to talk about a white dwarf and even a supernova or black hole or neutron star. So um, the very first thing I wanted to show you, though, is again on this HR diagram. If we have stars that are in the main sequence, then we have this mass luminosity function. So that works for main sequence stars. You remember what main sequence means? That means it's burning hydrogen to helium. So if a star is on the main sequence, which is over here, so if a star is somewhere here, there is a mass luminosity function. In other words, mass is related to luminosity. Now you might be able to sort of see something like that. Look over here. Over here, for example, more, uh, more luminous, more luminous, more mass. So this right here is a very massive star, for example. If you look at this, this is 60 times the mass of the sun. Down here, so this sort of matches this luminosity on this scale right here. And then if you look at a star over here, it turns out it also has more mass. Now what about a star that has low luminosity? So maybe like down here. So if you look at this, the luminosity value, so low luminosity. And it's less massive as well. So you see it seems like the mass of a star is also somehow related to its luminosity. Because over here you can actually see numbers like 0 0.1 times the mass of the sun, sort of in purple here, or 0 0.3 times the mass of the sun. So this mass luminosity function, or sort of relation, um, that can actually be written like this. Now it's a little bit difficult because it, it's a little bit dodgy here, but we could say that the luminosity is proportional to the mass to the power of n. And there we say that n is some number between uh, 3 and 4. It turns out it's not exactly clear or easy to tell exactly what it should be. There's a lot of different eventualities, but n is somewhere between 3 and 4. So this is sort of the mass luminosity function. And remember that L is luminosity, and M is just the mass of the star. So maybe we'll say, uh, I mean, this could be in kilograms, but of course, in this case, it could also be in solar masses, just in order to compare it. Just like the luminosity can be written in solar units. In other words, a luminosity of one means it's exactly the same luminosity as our sun. And notice this little one right here corresponds to our sun. And of course, that tells us that it's a yellow star and it's a G star and so on. So this right here is the mass luminosity function. Like I said, it only works for main sequence stars. But now what happens after the red giant stage? So in the last videos, we've been looking at explaining main sequence and what happens to stars as they leave the main sequence and they end up, you know, uh, they, they run out of hydrogen in the core. So then they have to, well, then the core collapses and then they end up eventually fusing uh, helium and then they eventually fuse higher and higher things. And eventually they end up sort of this red giant phase. So what happens after this red giant stage? Now, we mentioned this before, but um, at red giant stage, this is the important thing here, that the core cannot fuse iron. So this is the sort of the main thing right here. It can't fuse iron, so it runs out of things to do. I mean, it's sort of, it's out of options. So it runs out of options. In other words, it can't contract. You know, because if it contracted, uh, well, it turns out you can't really squish it much more. Um, now there we can talk about this again, why iron. So iron right here, that's the element that has the highest uh, binding energy per nucleons. And this tells us that fusion, which is what we're doing here, it cannot fuse anything higher than iron because it's not energetically favorable. So as a result, then what happens? Well, it kind of depends on the mass of the star. So if the remaining 
part of the star, the stellar remnant. In other words, remember at the beginning you have this star over here, and when it's done it ends up kicking off stuff and uh, expanding and the core becomes really weird, but it eventually ends up somewhere up here. The vast majority of stars end up somewhere here. But it all depends what happens after this stage, and it depends on what their own mass is. So it turns out if the stellar remnant, in other words the remaining stuff left over, in other words, that red giant mass, if it's less than 1.4 solar masses. Okay, so that's what this right here means. That means if the mass of the star is less than 1.4 solar masses. This is really what we're saying here. By the way, you might wonder what is this uh, 1.4 solar masses. This is actually known as the Chandra Sekar limit. Chandra Sekar. And that was a really, really clever Indian astrophysicist. He did so many things. I mean, lots and lots of things in astrophysics have his name in it. Um, but one of the things he figured out was this right here, that this right here was the sort of the mass of a stellar remnant that tells you basically what's going to happen. It was all about how stable things could be. And it was all about looking at white dwarfs and electron degeneracy pressure and looking at that and what would really happen. But the results really for us is just that the mass of a star, if the rem if mass of the remnant is less than 1.4 solar masses, then it's going to do this. So it's going to start off as red giant. I mean, that's the sort of first stage. And what's going to happen then? It's going to go to the right and become a planetary nebula. Now that's a sort of problematic word because it implies it makes planets, but no it doesn't. It's just that they used to think that this is something looking like a planet, so they called it a planetary nebula. But it basically, what happens here is uh, it just gives off some layers. It just sort of sheds some layers. Okay, so after red giant, it goes to planetary nebula. And after that, it just becomes, so maybe we'll say it cools. Oops. We'll say it cools. To become a white dwarf. So this is what will happen to a star that has a stellar remnant less than 1.4 solar masses. Our own sun, by definition, even at its full mass, so to speak, it's obviously less than 1.4 times its own mass. In fact, when our own sun is done, it's going to be much less than 1.4, and it's going to be even less than its own mass. So of course, our own sun is going to do something like this. It's going to cool to become a white dwarf. I didn't really write this very nicely here. So it cools to become a white dwarf. Now, what what is going on in a white dwarf here? Well, what's happening is each time um, that this star was sort of collapsing, the, the idea was, if we go back up here, each time the star was sort of collapsing, it was ended up uh, making you know higher and higher elements. Now what happened was, at some point though, for example when it gets to iron, it can't, it can't collapse anymore. So, I mean, I've heard of an analogy that I think works pretty well, especially because uh, I like rock climbing. Um, so imagine you're sort of, you're a rock climber. And so if this right here is some sort of cliff right here, and then you've got this, you know, so you're falling. Now, if you're going to fall, or you know, if you're feeling like you're getting really, really tired and you just fall straight down, obviously that would be sort of like, uh, well, that's gravity winning, right? So that's gravity sort of pulling you down. When this stellar remnant um, enters the red giant phase, that's when it has iron in the core. I'm going to say this, it can't fuse any higher. Right, so what happens is the core wants to collapse, right? The core, because it runs out of uh, iron in the core, that means it can't fuse any higher. And that means then uh, that it's no longer in hydrostatic equilibrium, which means it's no longer sort of giving out this outwards pressure. We were learning about that before, that, you know, the star was going to exert an outwards pressure. And that means that gravity is going to try to win. In other words, gravity is going to try to squish it again. But... Like this analogy here with the climber, imagine though that the climber ends up having a ledge there in order to sort of sit on. So although he, the climber is not on the ground, he's sort of on a ledge here. So this ledge, that's going to explain a little bit about why it is that a white dwarf can be stable. So it turns out a white dwarf can be stable 
do to now this is a little bit complicated but um, we'll call it electron degeneracy pressure now that is something that goes with uh, it's actually related to quantum mechanics and it basically talks about how um, it's all about how much you can squish electrons and basically it turns out that electrons can't be sort of stacked much higher than this amount in other words although the core wants to collapse it's as if it's sort of the core sits on a little ledge in other words it just says aha I can just sit here what's causing it to be stable in other words what's causing it to counteract gravity it's this electron degeneracy pressure so this ends up pushing outwards enough to sort of stabilize in other words enough enough to sort of stay still in other words gravity doesn't have to win in other words it just sort of stays still it becomes stable now this white dwarf of course then it's going to eventually uh, cool down and just die so it cools down to become a white dwarf and eventually it just dies so it eventually dies out so it doesn't really go out with a bang it sort of goes out with a pfft sort of a fizzle. Right, so it cools to become a white dwarf and eventually dies out. Now I wanted to show you this after the red giant face. Here, I'll show you this picture right here. This right here is um, an HR diagram for the evolution of a star like our sun, or what are considered sort of medium mass stars. So what happens is, of course, it's, uh, this is the visual absolute magnitude, but that could also be seen as the luminosity. This tells you about the, remember, these are the colors or the spectral classes. So this is uh, very, very hot, and it looks blue. Over here is very cool, and it's red. Of course, our star is yellowish, and it's a G star. So there it is. Now, our own star, it spends, of course, the vast majority of its life on the main sequence, right? So it's happily burning. So while it's here, while it's here, for example, it's burning hydrogen to helium. Whoops. Not helium. It's burning hydrogen to helium. But of course, what happens, now of course, it spends most of its life here. And then what happens is it runs out of hydrogen in the core. We've talked about this before. And as a result, then the core contracts and the outer part expands. And that happens here. So it goes whoa, up to here. In other words, it's going to have a higher luminosity here. It's actually going to get cooler. See, it's actually gone from some hot temperature to something cooler over here. Because remember, this is this is something cooler and this is something hotter. So it's sort of the outer part, at least, will look like it gets cooler. Remember, the inner part does different things. This is the outer part that we could sort of see and detect. Right? That's the only part that's giving us light where we can actually detect it. So what happens is when it runs out of hydrogen, the core contracts, so that's what's happening here. What happens is helium flash, that's actually when it starts to burn or fuse helium. So right here, in this stage right here, it's burning helium to carbon and oxygen, for example. And of course, what happens then is it's going to run out of helium and do some sort of other things. It's going to sort of do these weird sort of things like this. As it comes out, we call these asymptotic giant branch. It's sort of going to be sort of some sort of lines going like as it sort of makes new things and those run out and makes other things and those run out but basically it's going to end up being a red giant what happens then is it's going to shed off some of its layers so then it's going to become sort of stable remember we just talked about that here here it'll become stable uh, because of electron degeneracy pressure what will happen is some of the layers then will end up being sort of pushed out it's going to release some of its gas layers and here's a picture that I took of the Dumbbell Nebula. This is an example of a planetary nebula, which means a star at the center of this has, it's basically at the end of its red giant phase, and so it's kicking out these layers of gas. These layers of gas are sort of going out. Okay, so there's layers of gas that are sort of being kicked out like this. And if you look very, very carefully, you can sort of see some little sort of lines of where some of these sort of layers have been sort of kicked out. It's a little bit hard to see, but uh, if you look really carefully, you can sort of see some different layers going on here. And so what's happening is that is a planetary nebula. Then what happens, of course, later on, well, after it's done kicking off, whoops, I guess I didn't need that one. After it's done kicking off all of its uh, layers, which is here, uh, then what happens is it just becomes a sad little white dwarf. So it's going to end up basically going down to here and it's going to eventually just die out. 
In other words, it's going to give off less and less light until we can't detect it anymore. Now, it still exists. It's still matter. It's still mass, but it will no longer be having fusion. It will no longer be giving off light. And as a result, it'll just sort of disappear from this graph because this has to do with things that we can see. We can see them because they give off light. As a result, we can take their spectrum and do all this stuff. So eventually when it stops giving off enough light, we can't see them, so they just sort of disappear from this graph. They still exist somewhere, obviously. It's not that they stop existing, but they stop giving off light. So as far as stars go, we're pretty much done with thinking about them. So that's what happens to a star of sort of moderate mass. That's a star that could be like our sun. It'll do something very much like this. It'll become a red giant eventually. It'll kick off a lot of its layers as a planetary nebula, and it'll eventually become a white dwarf, which is stable due to electron degeneracy pressure.